today's project I'm going to show you how to make these little furry boots. They can be made for children or they could be made for adults, it doesn't really matter. But they are quite tiny, uh, so I've put a ruler in front so you can see how small they are. Um, which means that they're lovely either on cupcakes or on big cakes, it doesn't really matter. first job I do is to use ordinary black sugar paste to make the little stripes and I'd break off a tiny piece of paste, roll it into a ball and then roll tiny little pieces into stripes. Now this could be used for the tiger or the zebra print and if you just make um, a whole load of these and pop them into uh, an airtight box. So when it comes to the, doing the stripes for the top of the shoes, then they're all ready to stick on. The sole is made from rolled out Mexican paste or flour paste. What you want is something that dries really slowly and leathery. And I've rolled it out so it's about the same thickness as the cutter. So the edge of it just hangs over the um, edge of the paste. So cut out the sole. If you pull the paste away from around it you know that it's all cut all the way and just leave the sole to dry um, for about 10-15 sort of minutes or even longer if you've got plenty of time. The next thing is uh, to make the tiger boots what I've done is I've used Mexican paste and I've rolled out a little piece of the Mexican paste um, and I've just to check the sizes I'm using um, an oval and two squares out of the set of the shoes and it's just so that I don't end up with too much paste rolled out but I'm rolling out here uh, just ordinary sugar paste because this comes ready coloured in lots of different colours and if you wanted to, you could use um, you could use ready coloured flour paste. So all I'm doing there is just rolling that over the the piece of Mexican paste, and the Mexican paste will give it more strength when it comes to the um, putting the shoe together. So again, I'm just marking this with just on the surface, not cutting all the way through with the cutters that I'm using, which is the large square and the, and the large oval. And then I'll just cut off the spare of the orange paste around it. And then I can start putting my little black pieces on that I made earlier on. So I've put them all into a little box here. And then just put them on top of the, the paste randomly so that they form a nice tiger pattern. And this, the pattern you can use is very similar to the to what you can use for the zebra print as well. So if they wiggle slightly as they go on, that's even better. So you don't have to you don't have to worry about if they look a little bit wonky. And I'm just putting them on, and I've put the the parts quite close together so that if they overlap slightly it doesn't matter I'm not wasting my little pieces of black so little wiggly bits so press them in with your fingers and the idea is that uh, if you put it on straight away while the paste is still soft then you won't need to actually dampen the paste. It should just stick. And carry on down into the oval shape too. So that they overlap the edges of the of the shapes that you're cutting out. you want this to look as random as possible. I 
And don't worry if there are odd little dots of the black going on there either, That's, that will also look natural. And just make sure that it looks nice and stripy. Now you don't need to go all the way along the oval because we're actually going to be cutting off half of the oval part. Now to keep them all in place just put plastic bag over the top and very gently roll over with a rolling pin. The plastic bag will just stop them wiggling about too much and it will just help hold them down while you press them in place. Then cut all the way through the paste this time, give it a bit of a wiggle and then the two squares as well. And pull the paste away. And that gives you your nice little patterned pieces of paste. Then cut half of the oval by using the same oval cutter. So you don't want to uh, worry about a different cutter. And that gives you this little shape which will become the front of the shoe. So dampen the edge of the sole with water. So this is why you need it thick. You need to stick the front to the side of the sole. So press the edge of the sole and put that in place and bring the smaller pieces around the back. And while that's there, you can just help it up a little bit. If you press in with a Dresden tool underneath the layer, you'll be able to just lift it away from the sole so that it does actually look a little bit more raised. Then get one of your squares, dampen it around the back of the shoe and also dampen those side edges I'm doing it so that the stripes go horizontal, but you could do it whichever way you like. And bring the, the sides in slightly. Then with the other square, cut, using the large circle out of the set, cut a little piece off the bottom. And again, dampen the underneath and the edge of the paste and then rest that on the front of the boot and bring the edges of the paste together so they just butt together. Now the best thing to do at this stage is to let it sit and dry for a few minutes so that the pieces will actually hold together before putting on the fur. So I'm going to stick the fluff on next and to do that you can stick uh, the fluff on with ordinary water, tap water, or if you have a problem with it sticking sometimes I find that using piping jelly works beautifully so all you need to do is pipe a line of piping jelly where you're going to stick it. And around the top edge. Then 
I'm just going to use ordinary sugar paste and a small sieve or tea strainer. And the reason you use ordinary sugar paste is that you're going to push this through by just stretching the paste through with your thumb. And if you try doing it with a gum paste, you'll soon find that that really hurts and it really doesn't want to go through. So here we've got a little strip of fluff. You just cut it off with a, a small knife. And press it into place. So if you just cut a little strip off at a time, then you can help it into place with something pointy so that uh, you don't flatten it too much. A little bit more fluff. Push it through and of course if you want the fluff to be longer for any other different project, you know, if you're making grass or, or hair or anything like that, you can just push through a little bit more paste. And you'll find if you're using the piping jelly that as soon as you put the fluff towards it, the piping jelly just holds it all in without worrying too much about it falling off. So you keep going and put on as much fluff as you like. and fill in spaces if you have any. Then you see that's all covered in fluff. You can just push the paste around until it's looking as fluffy or as neat or as you like and that's the little tiger print shoe finished.